Coach, I guess you, you have to feel like you have a really nice blend of experience. You know, guys that got experience last year, an older guy, and then a lot of talented youth. That's a pretty good blend to have in that, that back end. Yeah, we got a we got a good group. You know, uh, when, with RJ coming back, that gives us a ton of experience, and and then Khalil Barnes getting experience. You know, he's a young guy, but got a lot. You know, ended up starting and, and did really, really good. So excited to have him back. You get Tyler Venables back, uh, you know, coming off the injury. Uh, and then Colin Griffin, uh, the experience he got last year. And uh, throw in Sherrod Coble, who's going to be an absolute stud. And, and the young kids we had come in. So this uh, this spring we had, you had Ricardo Jones. You had Ricardo Jones come in. You had Joe Wilkinson come in. Noah Dixon come in. So. A lot of a lot of young guys. Still, Colin Webb and, and Robert Billings are both going to be redshirt freshmen too. That uh, you know need to get experience. Good, good blend. Tyler Venable specifically. Just yeah. What he's been in the program so long. His knowledge of what you're trying to do. Yeah. You he, find him sitting there helping other guys. Yeah. He's a lot like RJ. You know, they they both came in together. He has a great knowledge of the defense. You know, unfortunately, he's just had those hamstring injuries that's, that's kept him out. It's that shoulder injury. He pulled a peck. Uh, you know, he's just been he's just been hampered with the injury. So, it'd be I'm excited for him. You know, first of all, he got a full spring in, which was great. And then uh, for him, we'll see how he does this fall. But excited, you know, for early fall to actually get all those reps and, and get him going. So, and it's it's good to see him with a smile on his face out there. You know, performing. And, coaching and doing what he does best. What does RJ being back specifically do to this defense? Does it just give it that charge? Yeah. I think it's a big help. You know, the uh, safety is such an important position. I mean, because you got – that's kind of become the game with nickel defenses now. You have to have that extra safety to move down to nickel. But for RJ, he can play all three of them. He can play – Strong safety, free safety, he can play nickel, uh, you know, but I feel like we've got enough depth around him. He can settle in at one of those safety positions, you know, really lock in on that. But for him in the off season to be able to coach all the younger guys up, knowing that he knows exactly what to do, alignments, assignments, keys, reads, and being able to convey that message. He's been out on the field. Uh, in key situations, so he knows what it's like and can explain that to the players. Uh, he's just been—it's a real asset for us in our defense. I mean, it's—I mean, it's like having a quarterback back on on defense because he's got to—you know—he's got to get all those coverages and all those keys and calls down. Got Tyler on this sidelines last year is kind of a player coach with the headset every day. Did it feel like a like mini Brent was out it, there? It, it was great. Yeah, it was great having him out there. And, and we wanted – I wanted him to have a role, you know, on the field. He couldn't play. and uh, But I wanted him to have a role. So, uh, I know he wants to be a coach someday. I thought that would be the best thing to do, man. So, we put a headset on him and said, in some of the games and said, hey, man, let's go to work. And he took pride in it, and he was just very unselfish and, and jumped right in. He did a great job. And to compare him to his dad, I yeah. mean, yeah, he's he's a lot like his dad. You know, they're the same people. No, no question about it. You obviously don't want to have the injuries that you suffered last year, but it did throw some younger guys into bigger walls. How much does that help now heading into this year? Those guys have, have faced good teams. These guys have faced Kentucky in that passing offense. And, you know, some of those better teams, North Carolina at the end of the year, South Carolina. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps. I mean, you throw, and, and there's some young guys that are, you know, they're just waiting to get their opportunity to show what they can do. I mean, just like Khalil Barnes, I mean, you know, he gets thrown in, and, and next thing you know, he intercepts a pass, he uh, knocks, you know, <coughs> causes a fumble, and the next game runs a touchdown back, you know, just all this playmaking ability. Uh, I mean, you're in the recruiting world. I mean, you know what we brought in here. We've got some great, great athletes that are that are coming in. They're just waiting for an opportunity for that door to open so they can get in there and make plays. You know, what's important is for those guys, those young players, you know, to see the light, you know, to see that crack in the door, man. When they do get their opportunity, they're ready. If they're not sitting there waiting, well, you know, such and such is back. I got to 
wait another year, hey, no, uh, you got to be ready. I mean, Khalil Barnes was ready when his number was when his number was called. He was ready. We got in there, man. He he made plays, you know, and that's what you know. That's what these young guys or these backups we got to do. Colin Griffin, he was the backup going into the Notre Dame game. He was the backup to the backup, and all of a sudden, Coble goes down with a knee injury on Wednesday. He's He hadn't got a lot of reps Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, Thursday, he had to get all the reps. Friday's basically a 20-minute walkthrough. He got all the reps, and boom, he comes in against Notre Dame and gets the interception, uh, you know, to, to kind of seal the game. You know, and then Georgia Tech gets another interception. He was ready. He, he didn't sit around and pout. You know, he was ready for his moment, and he took advantage of it, and that's what – you know that's what these guys have to do, and that's what you—that's the mindset you got to have in a place like Clemson. You know you got to be ready. There's good players ahead of you, but you know what? You're a good player too, even though you might be a backup. You're a great player too, or you wouldn't be here. And when your opportunity comes, man, go in there and go in there and shine. Go take a job. You know and that's what Khalil did. You know that's what you know a lot of the guys have done since I've been here. That's gotten that opportunity. What can Khalil do now? take that next step. Well, we saw the flashes. Well, I mean, he just needs to keep, he just needs to stay on course with what he's already done. He just needs to keep, you know, he doesn't need to try to do anything. What he needs to do is let the defense work for him and, and play within the scheme, uh, you know, and just keep working hard on his game, uh, mentally understanding what we're doing. I think, you know, with the game, the way it plays so fast. I think the game will slow down for him this year, just recognizing formation, personnel within the formation, and all those little things, you know, besides just knowing what to do. I think when you're a freshman, you know, you're just trying to learn what to do. You know, I think I think after you've played a year, now the game slows down, you can recognize formations, you can recognize the personnel within the formation, and what you're going to see, I think you're going to see Khalil take that step, you know, where that game really slows down. And I felt like it slowed down for him, you know, towards the end of the year. You saw what he did in the South Carolina game. So, I mean, you know, you got the you got the scoop and score. Here's a here's a true freshman. Everybody else kind of quits on the play. Well, hey, not him. He scoops the ball and runs it back for a touchdown. Sure enough, it's a touchdown. Well, in the next play, they try to take him deep. He knew exactly what the play was going to be from film study. There's actually two guys open on that play. Our corner bit up on the run, but he knew that he was going to throw that over route at about 22 to Xavier, and and he was ready. He came off the corner route knowing where they were going to put the ball, and that's film study. And that's coming from a true freshman. But to answer your question, it was late in the year, late in the season, and the game had started to slow down for him. And then, boom, he was able to go pick that ball off. A lot of young players on the field, defensive backs. How important is that leadership for RJ Pickens in the back? Oh, it's, I think it's really important. Uh, I think it's important that he's a leader. I think it's important that Tyler's a leader. Uh, you know, Khalil, I think he'll, I think he'll bring leadership. I mean, in today's world, having one year of playing experience, that's a lot, that's a lot of experience too. Uh, but RJ's got a ton. He just don't need to overthink things. He needs to, he needs to go out there and let the defense work for him, not try to do too much, not try to guess, you know, play within the scheme as well. Uh, you know, not just don't overthink himself. Guys that are smart like that will do that. What is it with these freshmen, Ricardo, Joe, you know, that, that kind of intrigued you? And what do you think they bring to the table? Ricardo, Joe, and Noah both. Yeah. I'll start with Noah. <laughs> Noah, Noah's really a mature kid. Uh, and I think he, I think he brings a lot. Like the, the one thing, take the one takeaway from the spring in recruiting, it was about his size and speed. I mean, this guy can run. He's big. He's physical. But taking it from the spring, you tell him one time and he gets it. You know, he can. He understands it one time. He gonna make a mistake, but then he learns from it, which I took from him. Joe Wilkinson, he's a guy that was like state player of the year, just got, he was an underrated guy by the media, but just made play after play after play after play, you know, his high school years. And then he comes in the spring, and I mean, he'll knock your head off. He's got incredible instincts. He knows where the ball's gonna be. He's really instinctive and physical when he gets there. Good listener, he asks good questions. 
And then Ricardo in high school is just a playmaker. You know, he's just all, and, and nothing changed. He comes in the spring, and he was making those same plays. You know, he's he's physical, he's aggressive, but he's a playmaker and he's an energy bunny. I mean, the guy just brings a lot of energy uh, to the defense and makes people around him better. I mean, he just brings a ton of energy. So, you know, I'm really really excited about that because defense is about energy. It's about enthusiasm, man. It's about having fun. You know, de defense is different. You got to have a guy that brings that energy, and he's a guy with that kind of, you know, that kind of enthusiasm. I love. Will Sherrod be ready for camp? Sherrod's going to be ready, man. I'm really excited about what he brings to the table. Um, you know, he's a guy that's just kind of been, he's been sitting back waiting his time. You know, he's going to get his time in fall camp. You know, I'm, I'm excited about that because he's got as much ability athletically as anybody that we got on the defense in the secondary. I mean, he can run, he's physical, he can hit, uh, he's instinctive. Uh, just, you know, I mean, his nickname in high school, I think, was the missile. I mean, he's just he's just going to come out of nowhere and just hit you. You know, just really, really physical. And now having two years under his belt, learning the defense, learning the position, you know, I think he's ready, you know, to take the next step. Is, is he as much a talker as we think that he is? He's a not a big talker. He's a big guy just with his pads. Like, he's, he seems that way because he flies around, he's everywhere. But, I mean, he, he's not a guy that really runs his mouth. He just he just likes to do talking with his pads. He likes to hit. I mean, he loves the contact. And, <clears throat> and that's a great thing, and that's why I recruited him. You know, but at the same time, you know, you got to be smart back there too, and not go running yourself uh, out of plays. When it comes to losing a guy like Nate Wiggins, who have you seen, kind of in particular, kind of slide into that quarter, cornerback from one role well, and take? Away I think one. Avion Terrell is going to be a stud. You know, you start talking about corner. Uh, I think Avion is going to be. I think I think he's going to be great. Uh, you know, at that position, fulfilling that role. And then, and then you got options with Shelton Lewis, who finished the spring as, the, as number one. But then you got uh, Jaden Lucas, who's a guy who's played a lot that was injured in the spring. I think it's going to bring a lot to the table. So, uh, but Avion right now, to me, I, coming out of spring was, was a stud. Richard, Kylan, Raw. Yeah. What is kind of the next step for those two guys? Yeah, those guys just need to. I mean, both of them are big effort. Kids. I mean, they give a lot of effort. They got a lot of size to both of them. They both run really well. Uh, I think for them, it's it's going to they're going to need experience, and and to build on that experience. With experience comes confidence, and with confidence comes opportunity. You know, I want a guy in the secondary who's I, if you're not confident, and and confidence comes with knowing the defense. That is the key for them. Just being confident in who they are, man. They're great players, great athletes. I want to see that confidence on the field that they need, you know, to take the next step. And and I saw that this spring, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that this fall. Well, three years into NIL, this as a thing in college football. So what's your take on how it's changed stuff and, and how Clemson has adapted to that strategy-wise, knowing that that's going to be a part of the career, no matter what. Right. right. Well, I mean, you know, uh, I think that's probably a better question for, for Coach Sweeney. But from from my perspective, it's been uh, it's been good. I mean, our players are our players are doing well in that area, and uh, you know, I think coaches handled it well. And I think you know, you see that with the retention uh, that we have within our program. I mean, players are staying. You know, that are getting calls to other places. They're staying here for a reason. So, you know, I, I think it's been good. When it comes to getting R.J. Mickens back, a super, super senior, how much is he going to factor into just the leadership role of the defense? Well, he, he knows so much about the defense, you know, that the kids look to him for answers uh, on the field. And when you're on the field and you have a guy like that, I mean, you've got a coach on the field. And... Um, you know, I don't think there's anything better than having a coach on the field. He's not a rah-rah guy. He's more of a teacher-type leader. So he's going to show those guys the way, and they're going to look 
to him for answers, and he's going to give it to him because he's going to know it like that. I mean, he is extremely smart and talented that way, but that that type of leadership uh, go a long way and went a long way last year too. You saw the improvement that we had in our past defense, uh, you know, in, in just a single year. And he's a big reason for that, just getting, you know, five guys on the same page. I mean, you got true freshmen out there in Khalil Barnes and you got RJ in the middle of it telling him, you know, hey, do this, do that. And then, uh, I mean, it was, and even with the young, even with the corners, you know, him helping those guys out as well. Because he can play, he can play any of those positions in the back seven, including linebacker. Him coming back, obviously helping other teammates. But how does him coming back for another year help him? And what do you hope he accomplishes? Well, you know, I think he wants to improve his draft stock. You know, when it comes to the NFL, and and I think this, I think this will do it. You know, and I think, uh, I think putting him in one spot and letting him really excel at one of those safety positions, you know, I think will be key for him so he doesn't have to play all three and get moved around week to week to week. Leaving him on one spot will help him and help him with his NFL, uh, you know, his dream of doing that. And, uh, you know, that's my, that's my hope and, and dream for him. Uh, you know, and then not only that, but to get the all ACC honors or the all American honors, you know, that he deserves. He is a great, great player. You know, I don't think he gets the, I don't think he gets the media hype uh, that he deserves based on what he's done and accomplished here at Clemson. Is there any defensive backs that are standing out so far, at least throughout the spring and summer, that maybe we aren't talking about as much? I think Ricardo Jones is a guy, you know, that had a really good spring. He didn't, he, he broke his foot and uh, missed the last five practices uh, because of surgery. But I think he's a guy that brings a lot of energy, enthusiasm to the defense. I, I'm excited to see what he does here in the early fall. I think uh, Sherrod Coble is a guy that, that, uh, uh, that doesn't need to be slept on. He's a guy that's a really talented player. Uh, one of the top safeties in the country coming out of high school that's just been battling, you know, injuries. You know, played as a true freshman. Last year he was slated to play in the in the Notre Dame game, uh, but hurt his knee that week. He's coming back. And then and then Colin Griffin, you know, we don't need to forget about him. I mean, he's a guy that came in the Notre Dame game, Georgia Tech game, and made plays. He can play anywhere back there in the back seven. He's a lot like RJ. Uh, in that way, just knows all the positions. But those are a few guys whose name, you know, that uh, I'm expecting big things from. And obviously, you guys have a very deep wide receiver room as well. How have you seen some of those battles progress throughout the offseason between the defensive backs and the wide receivers? And how well, it makes that, us, like, it, sharp, yeah, I mean, it makes us better. I mean, you said it, iron sharpens iron. It makes us better. So to have that, to have that competition, uh, is big. It's big for our guys uh, in the secondary to get better, and it's big for our receiver room, you know, to get better. And it's exciting to see because it, it makes us better as a team on Saturdays. So that's what we want. Thank you, Doug. All right, thank you.